Welcome to the worst nightmare of all. Reality. Explore the lesser known stories of our unknown world. Join the pursuit of the paranormal. Welcome to the new Paranormal Roundtable. It's been a couple of months since we did the last one. Uh, joining me, as ever, is Mike from Power Mike. How are you doing, Mike? Uh, I am not bad. How about yourself, Ash? Yeah, no, I'm good. Looking forward to recording another roundtable. And we are joined by Michaela from the Paranormal or What podcast. How are you this fine evening? I am very well, thank you. How are you? Awesome. Um, awesome. So, as we sort of alluded to in the previous roundtable, which was, yeah, just over two months ago, it's gone pretty quick. Uh, we all, we were all together um, two weeks ago in Chester at the My Haunted Hotel. We all got to Chester, we all drove up from around the country to spend the night private hire at the hotel like we've talked about so many times on this podcast on on each other's podcast uh so yeah it was good to meet well to meet you michaela and see you again mike yeah it was always, amazing yeah always always a pleasure so yeah so there was 10 of us there for the evening um like i say private hire so we had access to the whole building pretty much apart from roommate which is where the Grace Doll is, which you weren't allowed into. However, we did have the, the rest of the building pretty much to investigate, and the barn area for a bit, which was uh, pretty cool. Because last time we weren't allowed to investigate down there, so that was good to kind yeah. of investigate somewhere a bit different um, as well. So, Mike, with it being your first time at the hotel, what was your first impressions? Uh, it, it was okay. It was very quiet and... Mm. Much like a lot of other investigations, although it's although it seemed quiet on the night after reviewing footage, there was potentially a bit more going on uh, than we initially thought. Uh, it was okay. It was okay. And annoyingly, I was a bit um, disheartened on the night after it had been bigged up so much, and I think my expectations didn't quite meet the reality of what it was. But in the end, mm. it's one of those things where it's probably more active than 80 percent of our investigations we've been on although as i say at the time it didn't seem it and when it's picked up as the most haunted place on the planet i was a bit like it's very it's very quiet for the most haunted place on the planet and that's just me being cynical because that's how the paranormal is generally but yeah so what was your initial takeaway uh, from it michaela um yeah it was quite a quiet night although we did have a couple of bursts of energy and we know that it does do that sometimes. You can go for hours being quiet and then it'll have this burst. So we had one small burst with lots and lots of EMF in room six, with lots of devices going off. And then at the end of the night, we heard some quite incredible um, footsteps, three lots of footsteps, two in high heels, it sounded like. And then the third lot just sounded really close to our heads and as if it was a man shuffling about so much so that I was shouting up the stairs but no one shouted back <laughs> yeah so so we'll come on to that because at the start we kind of split into two groups upstairs I was with a different group and you guys were together in room six so I don't know anything that kind of happened uh well as you said there's a lot of EMF going off what what else was kind of going on or what were you kind of were you calling out or what was you doing up there um, we were calling out and had various devices in the room. The majority of them were, were on the rocking chair and there was a couple of EMF spikes going on. I'm not necessarily sure how accurate there is because obviously there's Wi-Fi and everything all over the building where there's cameras everywhere. But <clears throat> there was a REM pod that was going off on the chair, which when we used it two weeks prior to going to my haunted hotel didn't go off once at all in us using it. So that added some validity to to the to the REM pod going off. Um, other than that, I can't quite remember much else that happened in there. I think there was a, actually yes, I can. There was a bang at one point that sounded like it was from room five. 
Um, which may well have been, but Michaela's a lot more au fait with with the hotel than I am, and there were other people upstairs at the time, so once again, I'm inclined to say it's not paranormal because there's other people and you can't rule out other people upstairs in the building, but I don't know. Well, um, we don't know really. I did send the timestamp off to Danny, but he hasn't got back to me. Either he's too busy or he's not interested. So it's a shame because I would have liked to have found out whether um, somebody was banging in room five. Because if, if there wasn't anyone in room five at that point, then that was quite a big bang, actually. It's one of those weird ones where it certainly sounded a lot louder in the room we're in. So with to investigate yourself, Ash, in room four, four at the time it probably wasn't you and it may have been paranormal. Yeah, because we were in room four, which is kind of further along down the corridor and around the corner from yeah, kind of from room five. And we, on the whole, uh, it was quiet. We we didn't hear any banging, stuff like that. So if you tear a bang, I, I know that that wasn't us at that point that we were in room four because we didn't make any banging noises. We heard footsteps. We heard someone walking in the corridor. After about half an hour being in there, we heard someone walking in the corridor. Obviously, it's a very, very creaky, creaky corridor. Just thought it must be you guys moving rooms or doing something. So Sarah from Trinvestigate popped the head out, and there was no one in the corridor. Uh, that I hate to burst the bubble. That was your brother. I caught it. I caught it on my oh, locked okay. off, and they, your brother and his uh, fiance went into room one. And that was where all the creaking was from. And then a couple of seconds later, I can hear Sarah poking around and going, someone out here? And obviously they're in room one at that point. So oh, okay, they yeah, didn't yeah. say anything. There was a part where they walked past room six as well. And we kind of had to go, is there anyone out there two or three times before? <laughs> before your brother's fiance went, yeah, it's us. And we were like, oh, okay. Right. So, okay. yeah. That, make, that makes a bit of sense. And what one kind of weird moment we had in room four, which think you captured all the, the, the screaming, when all the screaming happened. Was when the phonetic con, forget phonetic con that the girls had, had not gone off really at all. And it went off and it said Harry, which was just kind of being where we are, just kind of out of all the words it could have picked, out of all the names it could have picked. Obviously, probably just as a coincidence, but it's just mad that Harry was the name that came out when he's the owner uh, of the hotel. That's kind of a, a weird, a weird moment, I guess, more than anything. Yeah. It'd be interesting to know how many names are in the bank. Hmm. Well, I believe it's made by uh, what are they called? Phantom Physics? Is that the name for uh, Chris's? Um, Chris's company? They're yeah. made by him, so he should be able to tell you, right? If, as long as he knows. Hmm. I was just very mad that Harry was, out of all the words it could have said, or all the names it could have said. Harry, come out! It's just, you got, it makes you question. It does make you think a little bit. Like, is that just a coincidence? Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, as well, we in room six, and then later downstairs, we ran the Alice box and got next to nothing that we could deem as relevant through it. Mm -hmm. So that kind of adds weight to, I guess, actually getting something relevant when it does come through. See, it barely went off the whole time we were in there, and I was in the room when it went off. I come in just as it gone off and it, it said Harry on the screen or whatever um didn't say it's like, a clip, out of, it's like a clip out of us yeah I know it's like a clip out of a sitcom from that clip you showed us where the twin investigator girls are screaming and then you put you put your head through the door going what's going on in here that's <laughs> so, so I left the room then yeah and start the all started screaming hmm. and then because and then, it said Harry and then Emma says is that who's in the corridor because I'd gone out to see who's in the corridor and then it, nearly straight away came back and said, perhaps. Yeah. After it, which is like, it said nothing, literally, for like 45 minutes, no words at all came through. And then just came Harry and said, oh, was that could be who's in the corridor? And straight away it just came back, perhaps. So it was, it was a bit of an interesting, interesting one, I guess. Obviously you can't do anything with it, really, but it was kind of interesting. No, I mean, not unless there's to borrow a term from Danny Moss, triangulated evidence or something like that. Um, if Harry was in the corridor, that would have been something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But other than that, it is just crazy. spitting out random words that we probably make fit whatever we want it to because we're human beings and mm. there's probably some psychological ploy somewhere in there. Yeah, no, definitely. So after that, we kind of, it's, like I say, it's quite quiet night. Um, we didn't really get much going on in, in the rooms and we went down to the rocker room where we did a double Estus. Um, that's I missed jump the head to anything, but I don't think there's uh, much happened between then and. No, we went downstairs, but not a lot happened down there. We oh, went to the bar, yeah, we went to the bar, and there wasn't really anything uh, going on down there. We were down there for about an hour, then went up to the brothel to do a double esters, like I said. Um, so initially, well, initially, we just started with um, my sister in law. Kind of the first time she'd ever done anything like this, like herself. She's been on investigations with me, but not kind of doing the asses method. And she said afterwards, she was quite um, scared and unsure because she didn't know what was happening. Saying it's really creepy. And if you're not used to having that, like the word the noise in your ear and stuff like that, and uh, I guess it can be. Yeah, the, the static itself is a bit disorientating if you've not done it before, right? So that on top of what could potentially be paranormal in terms of getting words through or whatever is definitely and being be blindfolded weird. and stuff like that as well. So you can't see what's going on around you as well. It's quite an unnerving thing, really. You have to mm. you have to be able to trust the people you're with when you're yeah. properly, properly doing it. I mean, that's probably not too bad in that situation, but I, I've done it where we're in the middle of the forest with three of us at two in the morning. It's like, I have no fucking clue what's happening now. Like, we're literally in the middle of nowhere. So it is the fear that everyone with you is just going to walk off and leave you there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know my eyes are not going to be, like, literally, like, yeah. You have that. You know, you know, you know I'm not going to do it, but you still think, are they still here? Like, am I still... Because you can sort of sense people around you and stuff, and then when you kind of... Because you're so focused on, on, on the trying to listen to words and stuff, and you kind of... All your other senses kind of disappear. And you just, then you, you, but then when you go back to thinking about it, you sort of come back into reality. You start feeling the cold, start feeling like, am I on my own? And then you start questioning, then like, is people still with me? Am I still in the cold in 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 this on this hill on my own? Uh, but yeah, so after that, I took over the Estus, uh, and Emma from True Investigate also had the uh, had a spirit box as well. So we both we both blindfolded both had the headphones on and you guys were asking questions and then we were obviously just saying words whatever that came out. Obviously I, I couldn't hear anything that Emma was saying or what questions were being asked. So do you want to kind of describe what happened at this part? Uh, from listening to Michaela's podcast, she remembers it a lot better than I do because I was messing around with cameras and trying to film it and stuff. So I actually can't remember a lot of the questions that were asked. Um, we... We started by asking um, who was there. And the first interesting thing that happened was that both you and Sarah kept saying the word baby. Um, and we know that that's quite a familiar theme at the hotel. So it was really interesting that both of you were getting baby, 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 baby the whole time. So um, when, sorry, just at this point, because I don't think I remember. I don't think I asked at the time, but we were saying it at the same time, or was it at different times to each other? It was at different times to each other, but it were you were kind of taking it in terms almost at right. one point, and um, then Sarah was saying things like, um, "I want my baby, don't take my baby," and the gist of it was that it seemed like there was a woman coming through who'd had her baby taken away. And we asked a few more questions and she was talking about, um, about possibly um, a sister, but we couldn't figure out whether it was the sister of the baby or whether it might've been a nun. So she was referring to a sister because I know there was a practice where if there were illegitimate babies, um, nuns would come and take them away and they'd actually sell them to rich people um, and give the money to the church. So that, I mean, you know, we might be, um, you know, adding two and two to make 537, but it seemed like a sort of plausible storyline as it was coming through from you both. Um, you've got somebody's name, Wendy, um, and there was someone, was it Peter maybe came through? 
Um, but it was it was about this this baby being taken away was the through line. Um, um, and we tried to find out, and she said that her name was Adele, I think it was. And Adele came through, I think, three times. So we sort of put it all together to mean that Adele worked in the brothel. She had a baby taken away by maybe some nuns. Um, and we don't know whether the baby survived or whether it was taken away and adopted. But that was kind of the general gist of the story that came through, which was kind of amazing, really, because what you were saying and what she was saying tied up together. Mm. I know there's quite a lot of... When, when, when we finished it, everyone seems to be quite like... I don't know what impress is the word, but I like, kind of like mm. this was really weird. Um, that stuff had happened. And I was just thinking, just as you said that then about the name Wendy, I was just trying to quickly Google it because is it true that the name Wendy was only first used after Peter Pan came out? So yes. I'm trying to get I'm trying to think of some dates out. So if someone was called so, Wendy. So mm. Patsy Googled this immediately afterwards. Um, I believe it was some. It was on a 1903 or 1908. It was the first time that Wendy appeared in literature. You're right after Peter Pan. But when we started asking stuff, stuff around dates, it did sort of start to say late 1800s, night early 1900s. So it wasn't specific, but it was around that time as well. And don't get me wrong. I imagine it would have taken a couple of years after Peter Pan came out for the name Wendy to take off, or maybe not. Actually, maybe if it was that much of a hit that people immediately went oh, we'll call our baby wendy but wendy but you're absolutely right it didn't come into popularity until or really exist until peter pan came out in the early 1900s i thought it was a bit later than that actually peter pan don't know why i thought that that's why maybe 50s or something allow me to google it um it was interesting and it wasn't long after that that we heard the sound of someone what sounded like walking in heels above us um and I, in my mind's eye i imagined not the sort of heels that are you know the pointy heels but the kind of flat heels that i don't know mary poppins might have worn sort of thing so slightly raised but quite sturdy that's what it sounded like to me mm. it, uh, it cer certainly sounded like a weird sort of scraping sound uh, to me anyway uh, you're right, it didn't, it's probably the wrong term to use, it didn't sound like normal footsteps in like shoes or boots or something. Mm, I thought no. the first set sounded quite distinct, actually. Um, and But the interesting thing was that with both sets of what may have been women's footsteps, the floor didn't creak, but when the heavier presence was there, the floor was really creaky. And that would have been directly above us and there was nobody up there when mm. we were doing this. And also Dan Callahan from my hotel was there as well with us. Yeah. Um, and he was just as kind of not sure what it was as, as, as we were. Yeah. And that's nowhere near where Harry's flat is, that bit. As far yeah, as I, 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 I wasn't sure. That was that was the one of the things that one of the two investigators so was sorry one of the to investigate girls said immediately once we heard the footsteps they went well harry's got a flat above us yeah but uh, it's not towards, above it's to, right at the back the end. yeah I, I don't know i've not seen floor plans or yeah. anything um the third set of walking was certainly it's one of those things isn't it where you hear something and you try and convince yourself well that sounds too human to be paranormal and the third yeah. set <laughs> definitely felt like I'm, I'm, we were there going, no, it sounds, it sounds too human, and it may not be, but but yeah, it was it was pretty distinct. Um, 1904 for the play, 1911 for the novel of Peter Pan, right? Apparently, and is that like a true thing that when it wasn't used? Like, it was a made up have, name. It was name a made up name for the show. He right. made it up out of thin air. Uh, the name Wendy was not invented for Peter Pan, but J.M. Barry is credited with having popularised the name 
So it might be yeah. a case that it existed, but no one was calling their children Wendy. And then, as I said, the novel, whatever comes out, and people go, oh, Wendy's a nice name. Yeah, I was. I really thought it, he'd made it up. Mm, I thought he had as well. I guess not. Um, um, it kind of depends where you read it, I think. I remember quick look, and it, some places was, do say it was first coined for Peter Pan. I was going to say, this is this is off of Google, so... What what's true and what's not, I don't know. Um, but yeah, like as I say, it was it was one of the, the to investigate girls who immediately was went sort of went, well, Harry's flats up Harry's flats up there. Up there is not very specific. It's def- it definitely no. wasn't right above us where we heard the noise. That's not where his flat is. No, I know. And I I I don't know, because Dan Callahan was adamant that it was sort of the corridor and or he, he said that room five is sort of smack dab above where the brothel section is yeah and i guess mm-hmm. the coral at uh, the corridor up there and he's probably got a better grasp on that sort of stuff as he's there all the time um yeah i don't know i say for, for my mind that's one of those things where i kind of go it almost sounds too human to <laughs> to be paranormal because <laughs> then dan went up um a to check there was no one there and two uh, or B to see if we could hear his footsteps, but he didn't go into the room. He said he just stayed in the corridor, and his footsteps weren't where and, we heard it. Yeah, like probably from the, that's, into room five rather than the corridor. But again, yeah, that's also inconclusive, right? Because if he's not going to room five, there's no actual way to test that hmm. they're in room five directly above us. If he's not going there, if he'd have gone in there and we started hearing him moving around above us, and then case closed for one about time, right? You know, it's. Room five is directly above us, but hmm. uh, yeah, so that was the kind of the S's method. Uh, and after that, things kind of wrapped up a little bit. Uh, most people went home uh, at this point, leaving just me and Michaela uh, in the building on our on our lonesome. Uh, this is kind of where I had my kind of weird moment because obviously, all of this stuff with the footsteps and everything else, I didn't kind of hear that because I was being the receiver for the Estes. And so I was, everyone had gone home and I was in the brothel room talking to Dan. No one else was in the brothel room. I thought everyone, I thought everyone had gone. And I assumed Kayla had gone upstairs uh, to the room we were going to sleep in. And so talking to Dan, the whole place was dark and empty. So I got upstairs, said, said goodbye, good night to Dan. Then I went upstairs. As I went into the door to the corridor at the top of the stairs, I heard a hell of a lot of noise coming from either room six or the corridor outside room six leading to, is it room seven? Whatever room it is, up near room six. Uh, so I thought I must be Michaela. And so it made me doubt. So I didn't actually go in. I just shouted, Michaela. No response. But I could still hear what it sounded like. It sounded like bags being moved, like you moved your suitcase or whatever, like in the room. It was really weird. No, it's definitely coming from either the corridor or room six or room eight, potentially. That whole area. And then I shouted again. No answer. So I thought, do I go in the room? And if no one's in there, I'm going to absolutely brick myself because they've definitely heard movement in there. Or do I just go down? But then at this point, I then heard Michaela talking to Dan downstairs. So I don't know where, you, where you've been in the toilet or something in downstairs. I don't know. But then yeah, he's talking. So I just went and stood on the stairs and in the, where it was light. And just waiting, I was so freaked out at this point because I your your was face was a picture when I came out. <laughs> I was like, "You were holding you all your equipment there? like this on the stairs, going." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "How are you not in room six? I just heard you for literally at least 30, 40 seconds in room six messing around." Uh, but yeah, you were downstairs, and then I think that's a chorus score on my own into <laughs> room six, so we both went together, and there's. Yeah, there's nobody about, nothing had been moved. It's really weird. Really weird moment. So we stuck our stuff in room six. I thought could have had some activity in room five, potentially from someone walking in there. We went to room five, and as we went in, we had two knocks or taps on the wall, uh, where the kind of the wall comes out. And two two knocks. So sort of straight away we kind of got like some noise uh in there. We asked for it to do it again. 
we were doing calling out, but we got nothing really in apart from that in the room. No, we did. You don't you forget the the really weird light. Oh, the light! Got. Yes, oh, because I've got something to add on to that. So tell us about that first. Um, to onto the light. Yeah. So I was sort of half lay on the bed. Uh, you kind of sat sat on the end, end of the bed. And one half of the room, kind of the room where the door is, kind of illuminated briefly, like a blue light, but only in that half of the room where I was. They light up only kind of up to the, you know, room five is like a beam halfway through the room. So it's kind of that illuminated. But in that half of the room, it went off. But we had no equipment that, not like we had like a flash or equipment that could have lit up to, we only had um, a K2 meter. Uh, which is like green and red. Doesn't wouldn't let up the room like that did. Mm. And then I saw. I think I saw it twice. Definitely, definitely once. Potentially twice. I don't know how to describe it. A blue, small, round light that kind of came from kind of the bathroom door area towards the dolls and towards the rocking horse. It's like it was on the wall. So it's like like when you. It can look like when you have a watch and it reflects the sun, you can kind of do like a ball of light on the wall. Yeah. And you reflect the light off your watch. It was like that, but obviously none, none of us were moving. Nothing was moving. My watch doesn't reflect it. It's under me sleeve anyway. But the blue light just went kind of on the bathroom door, across the wall, and then stopped when we got to the rocking horse and then disappeared. And that, that I, I got goosebumps. I was like, what? I can't explain where, that's, where the light's come from. Just, yeah, and just I wasn't looking at that point. I was going to say, just to interject as well, that corner of the room, as per the latest episode, is where they heard, uh, behind the rocking horse, is where they heard the knocking come from as well, right? Yeah, so that's where we heard the taps come from, kind of that. Yeah, and I I, th- I, think I met, I, in fact, I know I sent you the clip, when I was up there alone, I'm sat on the bed facing away from it, and there's two really quick sort of taps come from that wall behind me as well and I was trying not to shit myself as I sort of stood up and turned around <laughs> and went if, if that was you can you do it again please but yeah maybe yeah. there is something about that corner then and then on the um, Sunday episode there's um, a woman sat on the bed and she says oh I just saw a blue light go across the room and then that's when the doll starts playing music Oh yeah, I remember the yeah. doll playing music. I don't think I must yeah. have missed. Well, just the just before she, the the doll starts playing music, she said, "Oh, I just saw a blue light go across," and it made me oh. go, "Oh my god, that's what Ash saw!" Wow, I have to watch that back. Yeah, because and... that doll's creepy. It's like a music box type ding ding mm. ding ding type. And and from from Dan being sorry if you've missed this bit, Michaela or anyone else who hasn't, if, from Dan being up in the attic when he was basically above room five and behind that I wall. I haven't seen just, that bit yet. It just I looks like an, al- behind the wall. Uh, an alcove with potentially like a, a weird box about halfway down. Oh, and now I do. So I really, I really hope that they tear into it and try and find out what it is. There's plenty more up there. I haven't spoiled it all. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit of what was up there. It's... Um... But yeah, that blue light, like it literally for something that obviously I've noticed the last time we were there last year, we had so much stuff happen. So I've such a quiet night, but then this ball, this I don't even I don't know how to describe it. It's not a ball, it was a certain a round light. Just came from nowhere, disappeared. Could not think how that could have come from anything. Um and the and the light that illuminated half the room. Again, we looked like there's nothing there's nothing that could have caused that. I don't there's no like nothing with a light on it to illuminate yeah, or flash on or anything. It was weird. Now, weird gave me for the both the first time in on the evening. Apart from when I started hearing you in room six, that was the time I actually felt I actually got goosebumps now. Like just, just seeing a light, which being a UFO investigator, kind of like oh, similar to a UFO or blight or something. This, um, yeah, yeah, that's just a weird. It's a bit closer when it's in the room with you, though, isn't it? Mm. It's a bit more immediate. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
But apart from that, that was pretty much it. Um, I think we went to sleep around four o'clock ish. Um, what room did you stay in? Six. Both of you stayed yeah. in room six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I was on the big bed and Ash was on the small one with the wall behind him. <laughs> <laughs> And I was just laid with my sleeping bag up to my chin. Yeah, yeah. Going. Woke up. <laughs> woke up to the rocking chair going mental. <laughs> you <were> like, yeah. <laughs> Although, Ash, you said you heard something at 4 Yeah, so something yeah, what, it was didn't. either half four or five o'clock ish. I think I probably only just drifting off, like, because it's, it's, it's a weird place to be when you think we're in this room and nobody else mm. is in this massive building at all. I know. You can't relax. I can't room. relax there to sleep. It's quite a hard thing. So I toss and turn for a bit, but I, I, I was drifting off and there's a massive bang. Um, I think it either woke me up or, I mean, obviously I could have been half asleep and dreamt it, but it was loud. And it was either from the top of the corridor outside room six or the main corridor, like something had fell or banged. And it's what, what so I was still, I was like, oh my God. It's like, just close your eyes, <laughs> try to go back to sleep because I'm not going out there at this point to uh, to have a look. I know we had, had me cameras out there. I had a, um, a trail cam on all through the night in different places that if anything activated it, it would have gone off. Um, but yeah, that's that and, and that was it really. Yeah, and, and a lot of noises around half seven. Uh, a lot of noises from downstairs. So I'm assuming they've got cleaners. Mm. But um, they've got um, the dray men, I think, come um, at that point to deliver yeah, all the be. beer and stuff. It was that loud. I was like, this has to be people. Like, yeah. Be, I mean, it has to be at this point. Um, that would have been yeah. really scary, though, actually, um, to hear a big bang. The, the thing that scares me, and it's so silly, really, it's not the thought of, you know, the voices and spirits and bangings and stuff going on. It's the thought of that bloody Jeanette coming out of her room in the middle of the night and doing something. That's what freaks me out because I don't know. I don't trust her to stay in there. Getting up at three o'clock for a glass of water or something. You mean? <laughs> <laughs> coming to do something horrible to the poor people who were vulnerable and asleep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, on that note, it was a real shame that we couldn't get into roommate for whatever reason, but... I suppose they make the rules, so. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I've been there last time. It's just, it's a weird vibe, I guess. But then, obviously, the building is designed in certain ways to give off ambience, different, to maybe ignite different feelings and stuff like that, the way it's decorated. Uh, but definitely, when you go in there, it does feel different, whether that is just your, your mind, because you, you know a lot about this doll and what's happened around this doll and the potential of it, or you're just more on edge because you've got that knowledge. Whereas if you went into the room not knowing anything about it, you just think, oh, there's a doll in there. Doll in there. There's a doll in there. Box. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah well, I think sure. also because it's a very small room and it's quite a crooked room and the floor's not entirely straight and it kind of knocks you off kilter a bit I think mm. um, so yeah I mean and that was it kind of for the night um, on me viewing like I say I, I had a trail cam out there that's one of my equipment and when I reviewed that there's basically nothing um, it only went off about 12 times it takes a picture as soon as it gets activated by whatever's moved and then it takes a 10 second video and all the videos were just basically us walking past it or whatever apart from one video uh, around half one which is around the time we had the footsteps uh, upstairs and it, it gets activated but there's no nothing in the image there's it's just the corridor empty and then for the first three seconds three four seconds of the video it sounds like there's someone walking or the floorboards creaking right next to the trail cam um, and then when i've looked at the what was activated either side of it it was like half an hour before it'd been activated by nothing or f sometimes flies activating and stuff like that but you can see them on the picture and they'd be quite close to the camera but usually flies don't activate it that much and the other one was like two hours after this thing's when 
or a bit after when I moved, can't remember the exact time, but there was a lot of time between either side of it. So to have this kind of, don't know why it was activated, and to have, sounds like someone's stepping next to it or the floorboard's creaking right next to it at the time that we heard the footsteps from downstairs was a bit of, again, a bit of triangulation, maybe knowing that nobody's up there. But this was really, really close to the camera. And it has to detect motion to set it off, right? Yeah. So if it was someone in that corridor, you would have immediately seen them. Yeah, we got them, we would have caught them coming up the stairs. Yeah. No other way into. Yeah, there's into that corridor. I think it's just before that, around the same time, I've got what sounds like, what sounds like someone walking around up there, but also walking around like the stairs at the end. Or walk. It's it's really weird because the sound it makes when we're up there walking around is totally different to the sound that I've captured where it sounds like someone mm. else is walking around up there. Yeah, very weird. Because the floor wasn't that creaky. It's like you know when someone's... If you're in one of the rooms, like you know when someone's walked past. Is that creaky? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that, that floor is loud as hell, isn't it? Mm. It kind of makes it weird when you do get something banging. Like when we had... Last time we were there and someone banged on the door in move five, like we'd have heard someone coming up to the door. And then walking away from it. And there's no way of mm. not not making the noise unless you weigh twenty pounds or something. That's that's one of the biggest factors, isn't it? Where you have like an isolated sound or something without any lead in or lead out. You're absolutely right. If it was someone, you'd hear them coming up the corridor, or you'd hear them walking away afterwards. Mm. And it's where you get those like bursts of footsteps or a knock or something with nothing either side of it that you're like, well, hang on, how is that appearing out of thin air? Essentially, and that adds a lot of weight to. Something being a bit weird. Definitely, yeah. So that was kind of our night. Uh, very overall, very quiet. Well, I was kind of disappointed because the the amount of stuff we had happened last time, where it was literally non-stop for four hours in all different rooms. Stuff really, really closed. Day intelligent responses, both in voice and in in the knocking side of things. So then, kind of be that quiet. I should be looking forward to it. I mean, it was a great night, not going to lie. It was good fun being there. Just the activity-wise was a bit disappointing, but you can't help that with, with the panel. I said to you in the group chat, more of the highlight was basically seeing you guys and hanging out with you again, to be honest with you, rather than even if it was a bit of a boring, quiet night, it was just nice to actually see you again. Yeah, no, Definitely. Definitely. It's really fun, and it, I don't know why, but it always goes really quick when we're there. It just felt like five minutes, and it did last time I went as well, and it, mm. I just feel like, no, I want to start early and finish later. <laughs> you think like, oh, got all night, do all the different rooms, all the different things, and you... Yeah. So it's like, fucking got that I, time I didn't get in room two. <laughs> I didn't go in the museum, and so all oh, like, right. We want well, we want all room two. It's like not a chance to do anything really. Mm. Yeah, yeah I, quick. I don't. Well, I didn't go into room two, three, or four whatsoever. So it was a bit like <laughs> there's some other areas I've not been in. But yeah, I mean, final I guess final thoughts on this for me is I just can't wait to go again. It didn't, despite it being a quiet night. I I just want to go again. I just want to. Be there again because, like, like with the whole thing around the Haunted Hotel is the fact that you, 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 you have so many cameras so they try and capture stuff. Whereas you're only there for a couple of hours, you're not going to capture stuff. Like, you have to be there multiple times, go back to one location, keep investigating it, go to like one location for six hours, nothing happened, and then say, Oh, that's definitely not haunted because nothing happened when I was there. It's kind of you can't really do that. You have to keep going. I know, basically, they didn't say that last time. If we can get half of that again, that's what I'll be chasing. So yeah, definitely want to go again sometime. As soon as you get the funds to to go, it's not a cheap, it's not a cheap night. <laughs> get, no, it's not. <laughs> Maybe in the summer. Yeah, I I personally can't see myself going back there for a long time, just because it was a hell of a hell of a trek for us, and yeah, expense and everything. So. That's fair, that's fair. So, moving on, Michaela, as well as the Haunted Hotel, 
you've also been to somewhere else quite recently. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, again, it was another very quiet night. Last weekend, I went to a place called Mitchellum Friary in East Sussex um, for the second time. And it was really, really quiet. It's a, a really beautiful priory. Um, set in its own grounds next to a, a water mill there's, and there's a moat all the way around it. Um, it's just the most beautiful place, but it is really, really quiet. But I met some really nice people there. That was, again, that was the highlight for me. I got talking. I took a group round um, with another lady. And um, so we spent the whole evening with this group of nine people um, and they were so nice um, that we just had a really great time. We got a few spikes on the EMF, you know, the K2. Um, we didn't get any EVPs. Nothing else really happened, to be honest. We we got a lot of interaction on the K2s. So we were sort of asking questions through the K2s. Um, someone did the Estes method. Nothing came through. So it was just really quiet, but it's um, a very beautiful place to go. So you said you said that was the second time mm. where you've been there. So was there something that happened the first time that made you want to go again? To, to um, no, it wasn't. I was just helping out on a, with an events company that I've started to go and help out with, really, because I wanted I wanted to do more investigations. Um, Various things have happened with um, some of the groups that I've been part of. Um, groups tend to fall apart quite a lot due to politics. And I keep joining groups and then <laughs> I don't know if I'm the common factor, but I haven't been involved in any of the politics. It's just that all of a sudden that... I've got these uh, this big pile of T-shirts in my drawer <laughs> with different groups' names on that now don't exist anymore. And I'm like, oh, right, well, that one folded, and then this one folded, and then the last one's folded. So I thought, oh, right, well, I still want to go out investigating, but I've got no one local to go out with. So I've joined this events company, um, and I'm, I've joined them as a volunteer just so that I can go out. They do events mm. nearly every weekend. So I thought I'd rather be involved, even if it is a public event, rather than not doing anything at all, because I just want to try and investigate as much as I can and learn as much as I can. So, yeah, so the I, it was actually a public event I went on a couple of years ago. It was with Most Haunted. <laughs> um, but... Uh, they were very nice and it was fun, um, but we didn't get anything either the first time. Uh, it was quite a novelty meeting some of the people from the show, um, quite fun. So then, you know, again, it was more of a social occasion, really, because not a lot happened. I just, um, a lot of the staff there get lots and lots of things happening. Um, in fact, the, the caretaker there said that they'd seen two full-bodied apparitions the week before in the previous week. But, you know, I wasn't there. So maybe they only haunt the staff. I don't know. But uh, it's, a, it's a lovely place to go. And it's open during the day if anybody likes to go and look around a nice garden and old house. But um, I, I'm sure there are more active places that you could investigate. I'm glad it's going well for you, though, at least, at least, although it's with a public, um, uh, an events company, for at least you're out to be able, to, uh, I can't fucking talk, at least you're able to get out there and investigate and everything. Um, yeah. And that's the important so thing for me. Easier, yeah. 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 Well, like the more, the more you do it, right. The more you've got a chance of capturing something or it's enjoyable. So Exactly. And I, I'm happy to give up six hours of my time because I don't have to pay to go. I'm helping out. So it's a bonus for me to go and meet nice people and investigate and help them and show them how to use the equipment and all that sort of stuff. It's just really nice, really. Yeah. And, and like, who knows as well, you might, you might meet your, your future paranormal group through, through doing that, so to speak. <laughs> Yeah, because they certainly ain't around Chichester, I can tell you that. 
<laughs> Although saying that, funnily enough, I've met two people at work who are really interested in going on an investigation. So I, I need to find one. Um, that's, there's one, there's that's one really coming up good. in June in, in Portsmouth on your son's birthday. Fort Widley. Is that right? Fort, is, mm. Yeah. So maybe I could drag them along to that as well. Is it sold out yet, do you know? Uh, probably not, but I imagine if it sells out, that won't be a problem. Yeah. But oh, well, maybe I'll mention it to them. Yeah, we'll we'll figure it out, and I'll have the conversation if you want. Mm. Oh, that'd be great! I'm really excited about going there. This group that I've joined um, investigate there as well, um, and and also lots of they did Porchester Castle last week, which I missed which um, I'd like to go to as well. I've been there as a, a regular visitor, but I'd really like to investigate there. It's quite atmospheric. I'd love to go to some of these old castles. And um, I, I don't know, I've got a thing about castles. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it, even if it's, uh, if you have a particularly quiet night, it's cool to go to some of these places and go into areas that people don't necessarily go to, right? Fort mm. Whitley is a real mad one because it's almost entirely underground and like me and me and Patsy mentioned briefly about some of the experiences we had there on your podcast or after your podcast in fact Michaela yeah. so it's not even out there for public consumption but yeah <laughs> we we can't wait to go back because it was one of those places where some weird shit happened and we were a bit like hang on a minute yeah no I'm really looking forward to going one that I did that was quite interesting but didn't really get much was um, Portsmouth Tunnels as well. Mm -hmm. um, these series of, of tunnels. But there's there's lots of different Portsmouth Tunnels. I didn't realise that at the time. The one that we went to is one that's hired out to places like the Navy to do airsoft battles. Ah. It's for the um, the Navy people to kind of let off steam and they go and have these massive airsoft battles underground in the tunnels. So we, there were just literally millions and millions and millions and millions of white BBs everywhere. You're practically skating around on them while you're trying to do the investigation. Um, but we didn't really get anything, but it was really, it was that very atmospheric. Cool. Do you have anything coming up, Mike, that you can talk to? Um video from my haunted hotel is out this sunday so subscribe to the channel five o'clock it releases sunday um i'm trying to remember where we are because my head my head's all over the place um i'm in portugal next week but when i get back it's my birthday and then patsy's booked for us to go and stay in a in an allegedly haunted hotel close to us so we'll go there and do some ad hoc secret squirrel no we're not filming sort of shit in the room we've been around the corridors <laughs> yeah 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 even well, worst case we'll film in the room and see if we get anything but uh, i don't know i don't know how much i can say because if like most things places will advertise themselves as being haunted but if you want to go there and investigate they go no you can bugger off so i don't know how much i can say about what we're going to do there uh um, apart from that in may um, we're going to Groundlings Theatre with the events company that we go with, um, which they're all really excited for because they've had some great experiences there. And they have kind of told us that we need to go because it's really good. And then apparently there's a thing about theatres being haunted anyway, mm. in terms of music attracting spirits and places were very vivacious and vibrant and stuff. So That'd be cool to investigate a theatre. I yeah. did one a couple of weeks ago, to King's Theatre in Southsea, hmm. um, which, which was my first theatre that I've investigated rather than been on the stage of. Um, it was really fun. And it was like a rabbit warren. It was so big with so many rooms. It was quite incredible. I got lost once. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, on top of that, I'm going to start looking into where to book next for, for I guess for want, of better, for want of a better term for my next event where I find somewhere and go I found this place who wants to come this much money and then we end up in Stoke or something like that <laughs> um please come south <laughs> yeah I need to decide 
I need to decide where it wants to be. Me and Patsy really, really, really want to go back to Tudor World. But I know events companies really struggle selling it out for some reason. And the thing is, the group's not that big. So if people don't start, if if people don't want to go, then that makes it more difficult in terms of ticket prices, et cetera, et cetera, right? So uh, I'll have to weigh up. The annoying thing about Down South is I don't really know anywhere Down South that we could we could go or private hire or who I have contact details for or all that, all that sort of gubbins. So well, I'll travel south. For, I'll travel south for this one. So if we do one on the Isle of Wight, for instance. <laughs> oh, that'd be yeah. amazing. <laughs> no one wants yeah, to go yeah, yeah. Isle You could stay at mine. <laughs> that there's an invitation. <laughs> you could, you could. Um, took the boys out, send them to Granny's. Then um, you can have their bunk beds. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's one of those things that I need to work somewhere out and then weigh it up. We were talking about the Museum of Horrors, which is the sort of counterpart to the Stoke Haunted Museum. But much like Michaela said, I don't know if I can be bothered to drive back up to Stoke for the next one, especially not as I've been up north it feels like 600 times this month already so i'm a bit <laughs> fatigued with all the driving yeah that's fair enough um, the north yeah I'll... <laughs> <laughs> driving fatigue. the north's lovely to be fair driving fatigue more to this more to the point um but yeah i'll keep you all in the loop as to where i'm thinking and we'll we'll make a decision and then go from there nice right. one nice one. well i've got um I've got a very exciting thing on this week, and I know I keep bleating on about this, and I keep bleating on about it to people who don't even know who she is. <laughs> so hopefully, Cindy Kayser. Cindy Kayser, I'm good to go and see her on Thursday, and I'm going to have a reading, and I'm going to get to meet her because I paid extra because uh, I'm really sad, and I'm so excited. I can't even tell you. Who's that? I missed. What? <laughs> Cindy, Cindy Kayser. Cindy Kayser, off the telly. She's on um, lots of American ghost hunting shows. She's on The Dead Files. She's on The Holes of Files. And she's a really, really famous medium. K-A-Z-A-S. And she's a very beautiful lady. And she's, she's really she's talented. Sandy. Oh, my goodness. Cindy. Cindy, C I N D Y. Oh hell. my God! Is she going to pay us? For free audience, I apologise that nobody seems to know this incredibly famous and talented woman. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I know her. I know you. Yeah, Hooray! <laughs> yeah, hopefully it goes well for you. Did you? <laughs> That's cool. You don't have to answer this. Was it massively extortionate to get a reading with her? No. Um, oh wow! In fact, less money than to go to the hotel. That is madness, because I know when we went to a, a festival last year, there was a, a medium there who was charging between 60 and 90 pounds for a, a half hour, an hour session. And I considered it and went, mm, maybe. Yeah. Well, she's incredibly famous and she's charging mm. towards the lower end of that. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know yeah. how long I'll get. Maybe I only get 10 minutes for all I know, but I'm still very excited. And um, yeah. and I'll be uh, coming back to you and telling you all about what she told me. You'll be tapping her up for an interview on your podcast. No, oh, I'd love to. <laughs> I know. I fun. know. I've paid you this extra money. Could you? Uh... <laughs> but the great thing is, she's coming to the festival of the unexplained as well. Yeah, so I saw that. we'll get to, we'll get to meet her there as well. So my idea is to go. Hi, remember me. <laughs> From the theatre, and, 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 and hope it's not a repeat of um, yeah, <laughs> of, uh, you know Dave <laughs> going. I'm sorry, I Lady, have no Lady idea who you are. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, um, I was so like saying that I I did want to go to Parami last weekend because it was in somewhere in Wiltshire, mm. uh, but we just didn't get time unfortunately. So we're looking at potentially going to the Midlands one. Which looks good. Neil Story, Penny Griffiths Morgan, and some other people there. Sort of like a a smaller, um, smaller festival of the unexplained, I suppose. Yeah, or, I, I'd like or to alternative, I should say. Um, yeah, I was quite interested that they called it Paramete South because that ain't South, mate. 
<laughs> I'm south. Yeah. When you're falling not, off the bottom not, of England into the sea, that's when you're not, in the south. <laughs> what you mean is not as south. <laughs> Uh, it's all on a, a spectrum. Is is anywhere above Reading the North? <laughs> In your above world, the Wadf can... Watford Gap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to finish us off, I wanted to show a video. Obviously, listeners can't hear, can't hear it, can't see it. But I, I only saw it for the first time yesterday. Apparently, it's about a year old. Uh, I want to see your guys take on this footage. I stick it up on the social media so you can watch the video. For the listeners, uh, it was taken by a trucker on an Arizona highway. Not sure if you've seen it. Um, no, I don't think. Well, I don't know. I'll tell you when, I've, so when I'll I've, play it I've, now. Uh, but you're looking, I think, I think it does get circled. But on the right hand side of the road, as the driver's going on, so it's not the I woman, think. is it? No, it's see, so make of this. Oh. The white thing on the right hand side. A pair of legs. That appears to be a small mammal. No, but it not looks like her. somebody's waist, bottom, knees, and legs. Somebody's like, very small, though. Oh, someone's cut in half. Like, yeah. yeah. Waist. Yeah. I saw that on the N62. Did you? I did, honestly. Running across in front of me. I've never been so shocked in my entire life. It looks so similar. But obviously, where is this? Is it in America? Uh, Arizona. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, That's amazing. As, as it comes up and turns sound. Uh, it just like, it's not there as it comes up, but then it's there as it drives past it. It's... Yeah. Um, pause it again. It's weird. And it's like or it's got one shoe or something. Or is that potentially as the light interacts with it? That's when you can see it more. You know what I mean? Because you say it's the not headlights there as it comes up, but, it. I, but I think it's as the as the headlights catch it more is because you can see it from. Can you go back a little tiny bit more? Sorry, this is thrilling audio for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can't see it here. I'll try and go one. Oh, you can see a blob. Ah, yeah, yeah just, uh, you can just about make it out, and I think it's as the light hits it. But it is very weird that it looks like a small person's legs. It's a bit like R two D two. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah, I was once driving back from Halifax to Hull very late at night, midnight on a Sunday, um, completely, completely quiet M62 except for me. And um, a pair of legs ran across the road in front of my car. Wow. And, of course, you know, I didn't have a camera or anything. But it woke me up, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Makes you wonder, like, is that someone that got cut in half in an accident? And, like, half of it <laughs> remains and yeah, like, it's some weird. Yeah, or is there just some reason why only half of it shows? I don't know. Mm. Hopefully it's not too much of an inconvenience where ghosts can float, though, because at least it's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> at least the top half of your body's not going to be like, oh, where's my fucking legs gone? <laughs> like, um, <laughs> you watch ghosts on BBC. Um... No. Oh my god, none of you watched that on BBC. It's hilarious. I think I think I've seen I, it. They're all they all spend a lot of the time stood in the vestibule arguing with each other, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that this podcast always devolves into all three of us watching totally different media around the paranormal and going, Have you not seen it? What are you on about? Because <laughs> <laughs> one, one of the ghosts, like, he lost his head, got got beheaded in like 18, whatever. And he always loses his head. He's like, I said, like, come find me. Like, try, try and direct them to where his head is. Like, <laughs> put his head back with his body and stuff. Um, oh, but yeah, it reminds that's... me of Rent a Ghost. I used to watch that as a kid. No. Have you heard of that? No. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe you haven't seen that. <laughs> Mind you, you would have been about minus 10 probably when, when I was watching it. <laughs> At least. Um, no, it was really funny. Similar sort of thing. Like a kids' program, but they're quite good um, ghostly graphics for those days, actually. We had much about to see, like, like what you saw half her at the bottom half of her body. That's just so peculiar. It is. It is really mm. weird. So yeah, um, 
anything else to add for um, you can i finish? just do a bit of plugging um i for my podcast yesterday i spoke to a really really interesting man um he's called john russell and he's american and he's a mm. psychic <laughs> what <laughs> is that john with a motorbike yes yeah. yeah 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 have you spoken to him yeah a couple a while ago he's, yeah, yeah. He, he, like goes across america um yeah he's bike investigating yeah weird, he's, weird stuff so interesting really interesting guy and um, so that will be out on Paranormal or What podcast on Thursday. Available on things like Spotify, Apple, Castbox, Podbean, and all good podcasting platforms. Make Thank sure you. you check that out, <laughs> Mike. Uh, my Haunted Hotel episode out this Sunday on the Paramike channel at Paramike on YouTube. Uh, everything we've spoken about in this, plus some stuff we didn't speak about, i.e. kind of when I went into room five by myself. Uh, definitely check it out, subscribe, do all the good shit. Thank you. Ooh. <laughs> so, so. Was that, that a was, go? That was, my, that that was my phone. I dropped my phone, sorry. Oh. <laughs> if you pay me extra, though, I'll claim it's paranormal. That's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and for me, Pursuit of Paranormal, we are back after a two-month break. So there will be more episodes coming up this weekend and going into next week. So keep tuned. Make sure you check out Kayla at the Paranormal or What podcast and Power Mike on YouTube. Have a good evening, everybody. Mike, have a great time in Portugal. Mm -hmm. Send us a postcard. Pursuit of the Paranormal.